To me and many others, the best player in professional basketball is Giannis Antetokounmpo, which really isn't a hot take at all. He's a franchise ascending talent that's one of the most unique in NBA history, and also one of the most dominant in NBA history. And despite what the former NBA players might say about him, it's very clear that he's one of the best players we have ever seen play the game. For a player who's accomplished basically everything you want in an NBA career, done things we may never see again, you have to ask the question, how does a player that's won two MVPs, a defensive player of the year, an NBA title, finals MVP, and had arguably the greatest finals performance ever, prove even more and ascend even more? And the answer to that question is, by having the best season the sport has ever seen. First of all, what Gilbert Arena says about Giannis is comically wrong. It's honestly hilarious to me how wrong it is, but he is allowed to have his own opinion on basketball, just like you and I are allowed to have our own opinions on basketball. Even if that opinion doesn't really make any sense and is wrong based on the body of work put in place. And we can argue about why former players don't like Giannis all day, but I would rather spend that time appreciating what Giannis is as a player. But I did feel like I need to at least bring it up at the start because it was a trending topic about the player I'm talking about in this video. I know I talked about what makes Luka an MVP favorite in the last video, but I also think Giannis is another one of those favorites as well, but for a different reason. With Luka, the idea of him being an MVP favorite is based off the idea of having a breakout MVP season, but with Giannis, it's about the idea of him having a legacy-defining MVP season. For someone who has won two MVPs already, it might be hard to believe that he hasn't had that legacy-defining MVP season already. And while those two MVP seasons are great, some of the most impressive statistical seasons of our generation, they also remind me a bit of LeBron's first two MVPs. They're great MVP seasons from all-time great players with all-time great stats and a good win-loss record, but they aren't talked about as much due to the lack of playoff success in those MVP seasons. For LeBron, another reason those two MVP seasons don't get talked about as much is because of how great his 2013 MVP season was, which in my opinion, his 2013 season is the greatest NBA season by a single player since the year 2000. And I think Giannis could have a season like that as well. Giannis had the most overlooked near 30 point per game, 12 rebound per game, 6 assists per game season ever last year. Now it's hard to say he wasn't recognized because he was top 3 in MVP voting and was first team all NBA, but he was overshadowed by the great seasons of Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. And I'm not trying to take away from either of those players because they had great seasons worth putting in the spotlight. But I also think it may speak to how great Giannis is as a player. He had such an insane season, but people kind of just expect it. 28 points a game, 12 rebounds a game, and 6 assists per game, while being a defensive player of the year caliber player on the other end of the floor is the standard for him. An all-time great season is the standard for him year in and year out. He's not the only player in NBA history who's had these kind of standards year in and year out, but when you look at players who had similar standards, it is a list of players that are among the best of all time, which speaks to how good Giannis is as a player because he's also one of the best to ever do it. So what would it take for Giannis to win MVP? And what would it take for him to have that legacy defining MVP season like a 2013 LeBron or a 2016 Steph? Well, first of all, let's start with the team record. The Heat won 66 games, the year LeBron won that MVP, and the Warriors of course won the most regular season games in NBA history, the year Steph won his MVP. So a 60 plus win season would basically have to be in the guaranteed section for this sort of legacy defining MVP season to happen. Which I think is possible because they have enough talent around Giannis, I know Middleton is hurt right now but he should be back in time to play at least most of the season. Now it's not guaranteed that they get to 60 plus wins because they have real competition in the East, Boston, Miami, Philadelphia, and even Brooklyn are threats for the one seed this year. But there are two ways this could actually work in Giannis' favor. First of all, it says a lot that Giannis can be a player that probably gets the Bucks to that super high win total in a talented conference like this, or it being fair to believe that he could probably do it says a lot as well. And also, if he can lead the Bucks to the first seed and get 60 plus wins, 
in a conference with those talented contenders, it will only make him leading the Bucks to that many wins more impressive. The other thing he will need to do is have impressive statistics and that's gonna be pretty easy for him to do because he puts up insane numbers in his sweep. I mean he had a new 30 point per game, 14 rebound per game, 6 assists per game season once in 30 minutes per game which is insane to even think about. It's not going to take numbers that stand out compared to the rest of his career to make it a legacy defining MVP. When you get LeBron in 2013, up to that point it was actually his third lowest scoring season in his career. So if Giannis just does what he does and gets the Bucks to a top seed with 60 plus wins, I think it's very clear that he's going to be the favorite to win MVP. On top of the numbers and the win-loss record, one thing is most important for the idea of Giannis having this legacy-defining MVP season, and that's just the dominance he displays in the court. He's already a dominant player, one of the most dominant in NBA history. But just taking it to a level where it becomes factual that no one can stop him, taking it to a level that has you texting your friends about how ridiculous he is night in and night out, being the focal point of the basketball discourse, what he does on a night to night basis being tracked by the masses, basically the frenzy that LeBron had in 2013 and Steph had in 2016. And I think Giannis can do that. It honestly would be an insult to think that Giannis couldn't do that. In fact, I really want to see him have a season like that this year. I was just starting to get into basketball when LeBron had that 2013 season and I was fully interested in Steph's 2016 season. Watching seasons like that in real time is one of the most fun experiences you can have as a basketball fan, and Giannis might be the one to give us that next season, and it's going to be something that I think we could potentially remember for a very long time. But that's the end of this video, if you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already, like, subscribe, hit notification bell, I'm notified whenever I release a video. I'm making videos about basketball content all the time, so if you like basketball, really think this is the channel for you, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help support me as a channel, help me grow as a content creator, so I would really appreciate that. Really wanted to make this video already, and then the whole thing with Gilbert Arenas came up, and it kind of just played into it, I guess, but I was going to make this video regardless of the Gilbert Arenas thing or not, because I think Giannis is incredible, but if you want to check out other content that I make that isn't basketball related, I have a long form video essay channel where I make videos about anime and cartoons, so if you want to check that out, link to that channel in the description below and in the pinned comment. Two videos from that channel will be popping up over here, one about Classroom of the Elite, another one about Scooby-Doo. Click the icon in the middle to subscribe if you haven't already, or check out other videos on this channel. Another video that YouTube will recommend from this channel will pop up here. With that being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.